All right, welcome back to the video, guys. This is part two. The first one we did an unboxing and we kind of went over the parts we're gonna use. Part two now, let's put this together. Don't let me fool you. She's still in pieces. So we just got some of the suspension going. Let's get the rear suspension. And then uh, we'll get a rolling chassis and then we'll take the electric components and see where it fits on this. So this will be a multi-part series, so make sure you subscribe. Coming along on the motor mount, we've used that factory mount here, welded up this bracket. This will be adjustable, so we can raise and lower that motor, giving us good chain tension. Check this out as well. Now that's good alignment right there. So next, we got to make the rear mount for the motor, get everything tightened down, and we will be driving this thing in no time. And of course, we need to get this battery mounted on there. I'm thinking we're going to just have some angle brackets coming out the, the back, and maybe have a mount here, and then have the battery set right there in the middle. Let's talk about what electronics we're gonna use. Now we already talked about the battery. What I've done is I've gone ahead and made a QS8 anti-spark pigtail, which is nice. So when you connect this up to your controller, you won't get a big spark. We've got that wired up. We also got our big phase wires to our motor. And then we're also gonna have the hall sensor to the motor. So that is how the controller pushes that power and knows where the positioning of the shaft is. And then when it comes to the pigtail, you'll see a lot of different connections on here, but there's really just two that you have to worry about to get started. And that is your power and your voltmeter. So we're going to need to turn this controller on, and then we're going to need some input from a throttle 
and that will tell the controller to put power to your motor. So we got those two connected up and the cool thing is this is what we're usually used to with a razor but that's not going to go on a go-kart very well. So they also have a gas pedal but based on this model there really isn't a place to put your foot for a gas pedal. So this cart actually came with one of these and this is how you were supposed to give your gas engine some gas but this thing is rinkity dinkity and cheap. What um, I actually found was a razor brake lever and that I think is going to work out a lot better. Look at the difference in size. <laughs> uh, much better. And then what we're going to do is we're going to run that to one of these guys which it takes a manual cable connection and then transforms it into an electrical connection so that when this spins it's going to give your motor power right all right so let's give it a shot let's see if she works all right 53 volts we should be on right now also check out my other videos if you want to see an in-depth wiring diagram for these controllers or wiring up your accessories. Uh, I got a lot of videos covering that. Moment of truth. So when we pull this brake handle, we should see this motor spin. Let's give it a shot. Now I don't want to do it too fast because this motor can get all jerky. Hey, that's awesome. Look at that. Yeah. Awesome. So pretty tight throttle response on that. That's going to be interesting. That means, you know, you just give it a little gas and she's going to want to rock it off. So we can actually look at the settings in here and make adjustments to how smooth that start is or not. Either way, bench test is complete. I love that we didn't even have to go in here and change the voltages. This was on a 72 volt build. Now it's going to be on a 48 volt build and uh, she's working right out of the gate. When, uh, when you're dealing with 45 degree angles and uh, angle iron, it's kind of a pain to get those exactly matched up with an angle grinder. So yeah, we got ourselves a metal saw. Nice. Check out the links in the description. I got this on Amazon. Boom. Now that is going to make it a breeze. Look how big that blade is. Woo. That thing is going to do some serious cutting. The other tip is instead of spending, I don't know, $50 on this piece of angle iron, find yourself some garage sales, some estate sales, and you can find these bed frames. I got this two sticks of steel, five bucks, and then it was 40% off. So what's that equal? $3 and change. I got about $50 worth of angle iron.
let's see if this battery holds in there. Oh yeah, nice and solid, like a rock. That's perfect. Got super strong angle iron holding that battery to the chassis. Now, the reason why I wanted to do that is I didn't want the weight on the axle. If you put that much weight on the axle, it's unsprung, which means as your suspension keeps moving, it's gonna have that whole battery moving and then that's just a ton of weight moving around. We want that actually on the chassis with the person riding so that that is one fluid movement independent from your suspension. Now we already have a decent amount of weight uh, on the axle from the motor, so we definitely didn't want to add that to it. This uh, frame can handle 400 pounds, so adding this, uh, what was it, 35 pound uh, battery to the frame will be nothing because I weigh uh, under 200 pounds, so we're still way underneath the limits of this go-kart. So I'm super excited, it's looking really good. Um, we just got to finish mounting up this motor, just that back bracket, uh, get things wired up. We already have the brakes on, uh, get everything tightened up, and uh, we'll be ready for a test drive here shortly. So, um, of course, if you haven't seen the other videos, check out video one. We're going to have one more video after this at least. Subscribe so you don't miss it, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks, guys.